You're listening to FFOP Radio. Reach the audience. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the show. My name's Dave, and this is a fistful of podcasts from FFOPRadio.com. Back for another great week. Let me introduce you, as usual, to my co-host, although my co-host is, again, unusual. Not the usual co-host, that is. He is, though, unusual. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, you You know him. You love him. You've heard him on this program before, Possibly. Possibly. Uh, please, everybody, welcome RJ Snacks back out of the program. Welcome, RJ. Woo! <laughs> Bring him back on more often. Whoa, who said that? Uh, oh, the shit. adoring fans. One. There was one adoring fan. He sounded a lot like <laughs> you. <laughs> he lives in your house. <laughs> I just want to say, like, I know it's coming every time we do the whole countdown and everything, mm-hmm. but then there's that pause and then you just scream into the microphone, and it just scares me. It scares me every time. <laughs> so you here br- breaking the fourth wall immediately, RJ. If we're gonna do that, I'm gonna start telling stories out of school. But first, let me introduce you also to my wife across the couch over on the soundboard. Even though it's not hooked up anymore, uh, it's Chris over there on the couch. I'm here on the couch. I'm gonna hook up that soundboard again, and I'm gonna start wanting to hear sounds. Mm. That's what the board is now there for. Now she just for. has to make them. It's either that or I get this really sick ass mixer. RJ, let me tell you about this mixer. So this mixer has like, I don't know, nine, 12 buttons on it that you can preload with shit. So I can have, bam, the intro, bam, a fart noise, bam, all the sound drops I want. All obviously limited to nine or 12. I forget how many buttons. And then we can eliminate Krista completely. Was that all you made been made redundant? These buttons are here. Uh, please give your papers to the lady at the door. <laughs> Rude. But you then, can just record her saying just like she record her laughing, record her saying, you're right, Dave. Yeah, maybe and I'll then, make one, like, one or one two. Of, one of the two of the buttons will be her saying things. And I'm like, oh, Krista. And then she'll <laughs> just be com- uh, completely focused on the typing square during um, lives. like lives until I can get a Twitter robot to replace you. I was going to say, so I'm allowed to be around for the lives. So I'm just like part time per diem contracted employee for lives. Yeah. I mean, we're slowly phasing out certain aspects mm. of the show. It's not because of your performance. It's that the times are changing. The future is moving in a different direction. And, you know, it. Uh, my hands are tied. We're looking to we're looking to cut costs. Anyway, RJ, welcome back on the show. Sorry you had to witness me Thank firing you. Krista. No problem. I feel like the, eventually this show is just going to be automated. It's just going to be sound clips from previous shows put yeah. together to make an entire show. Maybe that'll be my ultimate Raspberry Pi project for the show. I just load every episode onto it and say, you know, create an episode, you magnificent bastard. And every week it'll pop out something fresh made of random clips that all somehow make sense. I bet Dominic could do that. Probably. The donkey? Yes. Is, eeyaw, there's eeyaw. a Dominic Donkey. Dominic the Donkey is a Christmas song. Oh no, we're not talking about that, RJ. Here, what, here what we're talking about is um, before the show. If if we're gonna be like, oh, you scared me during the before the show. <laughs> Everybody loves to eat before the show. I gotta get this. Like I, somehow, I don't know what it is about the show, but uh, maybe it makes the, you hungry. The words that I say when I say, hey, everybody, and welcome to the show. People are like, oh shit. Like Adam, he knows they're gonna happen. So he brings a burrito to stall the show beforehand. But somehow PJ's fiance heard it and she's like, got to get that food. And then RJ, he's like, yep, ready for the show. And he's like, oh, wait, Dave's going to say that thing. That makes me hungry. And he's like, ar, 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 ar. <laughs> a, a roll before we roll. <laughs> roll before we roll. The pre-roll roll. Pre-roll roll. It's it's ceremonial. Yeah, we all have <laughs> ceremonial pre-roll. <laughs> uh. So, RJ, first of all, let's get uh, caught up and touch base with you. Last time we spoke, according to my records, was October. God knows where you're listening now. It could be the future. Uh, Has anything significantly changed? First of all, I know that you've picked up sewing as a hobby. Yes. Tell me about that. Um, Do you need a more specific question? (laughs) 
Can you put that in a sentence? No, no, I, I can. Can I put that in a sentence? I like sewing. Okay, good. Nice. Great. I need a, I need a like five paragraph <laughs> report on my desk by 8.05. Perfect. Remember, I'm good at this. Your first paragraph and your last paragraph are both going to summarize the three middle paragraphs. Oh, the body. Oh, no. The body. The body wait, wait, wait. Five will. paragraphs? Yeah. Yes. Didn't you ever do a five-paragraph uh, five essay in school? It's an intro <laughs> paragraph, a body, and a conclusion. Ta-da. I thought there was supposed to be three. No. That's just... That's simplified. You yeah. can't... This three is for idiots. Five... That's oh, for your, okay. That's Oof. for your your serious English writer. For the thinking man. Yeah. No that's wonder. The thinking man's essay. No wonder I stuck with three. Yeah. Every time <laughs> I write something, I keep in mind the more paragraphs I make, the more smarter people will think I am. Mm-hmm. Or you so, just say the same thing in different ways. Yeah. For seventeen paragraphs. <laughs> anyway, we're getting off topic. Let, we're talking about sewing. So, yeah. um, here here's my first question, RJ. When when I'm hearing sewing, I I'm getting a lot of weird information about the projects that you are making. So are we focusing on hand sewing, like your needle and your hand are what guide your work, or are we using a machine? We are using a machine mainly. Obviously, have... like right, it's not 1860. Right, automated. You got to make it automated. Yeah, I on. mean, I I I think I hand sewed once, and that was just to close a pillow. But everything else has been with the machine. Uh, I figured, you know, knowing how to hand sew would mm-hmm. come in handy at some points. But as our friend group, I feel like nobody really likes to sew when we're making either props or costumes or whatever we're making. Mm-hmm. And so I figured, why not bite the bullet? And I'll learn how to sew. So now that's interesting. So I was wondering what the impetus was because I I thought it would be like my link to knitting where it was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it. <laughs> and you just learn it one day. But if if you, uh, you know, <laughs> it seems like you were doing it for some sort of uh, communal good. Have you joined some sort of hippie commune? Uh, it's more of a cult. Okay. Um, so t- tell me about this cult. Do we have aliens in charge? Are there elder gods? <laughs> some sort no, of anime just a, deity? We, we just talk to a tree mainly and we dance around in the forest. Oh, so you guys are like Link, like Hyrulean weirdos? Yeah, yeah. So, so let swords. me ask you this. Uh, what type of machine are you rocking then? Because I, full disclosure, used to do a fair amount of sewing back in the day, like between the ages of like 10 and 14 for some reason. Um, and then, you know, for shits, looked into the machines one day at a Michael's while looking at other projects and could not believe the number of settings, the amount of computer chips and like the integration with apps. Like I feel at this point you could close your eyes, grab like just a spool of fabric, chuck it at the machine, hit a button on an app and you're done. Listen, you're spoiling my projects. You like (laughs) people are supposed to think that I did these things. I I realize (laughs) it's, it's probably more complicated than that. But like when I was working with a machine, it was literally just electricity running gears and if I wanted to have a different pattern, there was a literal mechanism in there that would change it. Now there's like motors and servos and fucking like it. it I, I feel like everyone says this or should be saying it all the time. But the amount of things we have access to that are more powerful than the computer that sent the space shuttle to the moon is incredible. And one of those things is now sewing machines. Or maybe it yeah, has been I, for a while. I know I'm, I'm You're the rocking. Expert. Tell me. Yeah, I'm the expert. I've made three things. And yeah, I managed well, <laughs> I managed to not sew my finger. Well, so That's what have, what have we made so far? We've made a 16-inch pillow. 16 inches? Who's that for? Me? <laughs> we've All made right, up top. Hey ho. <laughs> hey ho. <laughs> we've made a 14-inch pillow. What's with the pillows? Because they're easy? No, those are like standard like couch pillows. Yeah, and starting projects. It's like what? I, so. My question again is: So you make it because it's easy? It's a square. Yeah, I'm. I'm learning. Lame. You, you start simple. Square's a little too simple, RJ. I feel like I didn't even know how to thread the machine until I. Oh yeah, yoy. Okay. Sorry, maybe, maybe I ne- not. Maybe I'm I not. Will, 
I wasn't uh, sewing for four years. My apologies. Yeah, I I oftentimes forget that not everybody had the same childhood I did. So why would you have that much experience threading a bobbin, let's say, <laughs> uh, you know, so but whatever, you know, I, I get that. And sewing is one of those things that it went from like it, it's so crazy that like let's b- back the clock up 50 years ago and you could be a seamstress working at a one of these machines eight hours a day and now it's all robots and that's like oh you know what i do for fun i do the thing that people used to break their backs for to make a living 50 years ago <laughs> now i do it for gigs i just <laughs> chuckle and laugh and as yeah. the whole time i'm doing it you think oh this is so fun and meanwhile like there's a lady in the 30s who doesn't even have a motor yet. She's working that goddamn thing with her foot. She's not making, like, pillows, RJ. She's not making dice bags. She's not whipping up a Dragon Ball Z sort of pantsuit. She's like, you know what? My kids need clothes, and I've got potato sacks. That's that's a good idea for our next, next project there. Think about it. I mean, recycling is a big thing right now. I remember when it hit in the 80s and everyone was like, try recycling. And I did. And sometimes it works. Sometimes. I'll just take some cardboard that I have. <laughs> yeah, you put it in a blender. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. Not to, not, this This show is obviously so entirely off the rails. It's like, whatever. 100%. But, <laughs> what did you expect when you had me on? I, I don't know. Uh, I think the coffee is hitting me. Uh-huh. But... What I'm going to tell you is, no, I'm, whatever. I'm not even going to start that story. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Well, uh, so sewing, I I thought we would be we would be more involved. I thought you would have more projects under your belt by now, because again, it's been 17 or 18 years since we last touched base. <laughs> well, he also made a dice bag. Yeah, I, I alluded sides. to it. That's I uh, <clears throat> with two sides. A reversible dice bag. Thank you very oh much. God. So hmm, reversible. <laughs> Well, we can get into the mechanics of it later. So, wh- whatever. <clears throat> I've got two important questions. One, one. That I never, one I never got to. Uh, the machine you use, what is it? Oh, uh, I just know it's a brother. I don't know anything else about it. Okay. And there's that, like there's yeah. like 40 different settings on what kind of pattern I want. Did you buy this new? Was it a hand-me-down? Was it like, oh, I've got a sewing machine. You can have it type situation. Oh, definitely a uh, uh, you-can-have-it type of situation. Here's the thing. Sewing machines are one of those things where if you say at a family gathering, you know what, I need a sewing machine, at least two people will throw their hand up and say, you know what, I can get you one. You know how I know that? Because one year I ended up with two sewing machines, and somehow I gave them both away thinking I had the other one. <laughs> so now I've got zero sewing machines. There's always someone willing to meet you in a back alley and give you a sewing machine. Yeah, I sewing machines are like so. Let, let's say that uh, <laughs> this this is going to be a strange metaphor, but bear with me. Sewing machines are the caterpillar for the bread machine's cocoon. You know what I mean? Yes. Sewing machines are like something that started in the fifties. Everybody's got them, and now they still hang on. Bread machines started up like popped up in the nineties. I don't know what it is today that goes around. We have one, and we don't even eat bread. I know, I know. Everybody's got a bread machine. I, I don't know how I ha- ended up with a bread machine and not a sewing machine, for <laughs> fuck's sake. But I, I am interested to see what that is today. I wonder if it's like the Bowflex or like, RJ, input here. What's some what's some piece of technology that everybody bought thinking, oh, it'll save me so much time that it's now just like a boat anchor? Oh, God. I mean, I was going to say a treadmill, but you kind of said Bowflex, so... Yeah, I, it has to be, like, new age, because treadmills have been around for a while. Oh, Ma- put me on the spot. I don't... Uh, I'm, I'm, not- I'm not... I'm not... Listen, there's no gun to your head, RJ. I'm not saying, listen, the show is over unless you can present me with evidence that there's a butterfly to this metaphor. Now, oh, here, <laughs> listen. Let, let's lower the stakes. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever worked as a cashier? Yes. So, has anything... Because... Here, here's the thing. I watch a lot of true crime... And as such, there's a lot of Walmart footage. There's a lot of supermarket and Home Depot footage of people buying murder and or cleanup murder kits, if you will. <laughs> and and I, I, that got me thinking even beyond that, like because I've gone to grocery stores or wherever and had like an odd assortment of things because you're like, oh, I need this, this, this and this. They don't go together. But the, the cashier has no point of reference. So my question is, did you ever 
get something that set off alarm bells as a cashier, like you were ringing them up. And you're like, oh, this feels like a fucking murder kit or something like that. <laughs> Not that I can remember, but I remember being on the other side. I went to the store and I You were I brought... buying a murder yeah, kit? A murder kit? Yes. Oh God. I, I bought <laughs> bread and I bought bleach, and those were the only two things that I bought. And I felt really awkward giving it to the cashier. The, I don't know why. I just felt I, like that cashier was going to be like, he's going to combine those. No, I... The, the human mind will will tie together certain things. Like, if you were buying bread and rad poison, the cashier's like, what the fuck? But bread and bleach, like, bleach is not something you can sneak into bread. Bread isn't something that's going to take bleach well. That's not something, like, let's say you run in and it's like some tomatoes and like some Drano and like some, <laughs> some turkey pasters. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's a weird thing. But... And I have to think, I want to find somebody because there's so much footage of all these people, all these cashiers, these Walmart people, like essentially just running over like beep. It's like essentially a bone saw. It's like beep, a <laughs> bunch of plastic bags, like beep, baking soda, beep. It's like everything you've ever seen in any murder kit, if you've ever even watched a second and a half of true crime. And I wonder if that person just goes home and is like, yep, honey, I fucking... Another murder kit. Like, what do you do? I'm sure it happens all the time because it's always at Walmart. And I'm sure you can't call the cops on everybody. <laughs> the person like literally has a bloody T-shirt on as he's buying all this That's stuff. That's the thing. All of the videos I watch where it's like, oh, you know, and here was the clincher. There was video of the murderer buying all the stuff he used to murder the person and clean up the person. And they did it. Like, in some cases, they're buying the cleanup stuff after they murdered the person and they accidentally injured themselves while murdering the person. And they're buying Band-Aids or whatever. So it's like... It's I, crazy. And you think the people, the murderers, you'd think they would think to, if you're going to buy a murder kit, do it at different stores. But no, no one thinks ahead. And that's why I'm wondering, I want to get at one of these cashiers. And I know, obviously... I shouldn't say obviously, but in my head, nine times out of 10, if I ask a Walmart cashier, like, wasn't that a weird thing that you just did? They would like, like snap back from the middle distance huh? sort of focus and be like, what, where am I? Like, they're not paying attention. So I, you do go into the zone when you're a cashier. That's the thing. And e even if you're like a really good cashier, you, you, you sort of automate it anyway. And, and not that you know, whatever the higher caliber cashiers are working at Walmart necessarily. <laughs> but uh, I, I just, there are some jobs I want to do simply because I want to feel it out for like a week. One of them is be a mover to see if I could <clears throat> tough it out and maybe get a little ripped. And another would be a cashier at Walmart to see if I could find somebody buying a murder kit. I'm just going to hire somebody and find out where you work and just send them in just to satisfy <laughs> that urge. <laughs> but <laughs> then you can quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You like, just throw the apron down. You're like, I did it. And you just yeah, walk that, out. That'll be the thing. Maybe that'll be it. Like I'll, I'll, I'll get a job at Walmart. I hate that place. Why, Walmart? Why not Home Depot? Because Walmart. I know Walmart's like the, the place, but that's the thing. If you want to go white trash crime, there's it's Walmart mm. and, and and they sell everything like you don't someone. No, it, it's got to be Walmart because I, I'm telling you all the footage that they watch. It's always the blue vest and it's always the dead eyed dude being like beep, 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 beep. OK, murder kit, eighty four dollars. <laughs> so maybe that would be the thing I, I would walk in and I would maybe maybe be up front with the managers and tell them, obviously, you're like, here's here's the sitch. I'm here. I'm looking for murder kids. And when I see one, I'm taking my vest off. I'm whipping it over my head a few times and I'm slamming it on the ground. I'm doing like, uh, you know, maybe a little NFL touchdown dance. That's when, you know, that dude needs to be called the uh, cops on and someone's gonna have to call cover my register. Cause I quit I'm done. <laughs> it happened. Call the police, but more importantly, make sure someone covers that register. There are customers waiting. Yeah. If you're, if you're MOD, I'll tell them if you're MOD and you see me, fucking running up and down the line and playing a fake air guitar like to Johnny be good in my head call the cops because that's a murder and I quit <laughs> it's two two twofold thing you're gonna have to you you make it like just your car door you open it and all of a sudden like a rope goes around your neck and you get dragged off to a van ah! 
<laughs> well, oh well, yeah. So, hmm. Yeah, cause, hmm. I mean, because you're kind of calling him out right in the middle of the store. Well, here's the thing. I would not. I wouldn't obviously be like murderer. Like I would just. Uh, it would be like sort of a flash mob of one type thing. I would just do. Uh, the, I, it would just be a celebration. Like I would say, "Oh my God, here it is!" And I would get all excited, and like it would kind of be like a, a contestant on The Price Is Right. When you buy bleach, do you do certain places make you um, show them your license or something? No, bleach oh. is like well, I, there's uh, there's weird shit that they make you like Sudafed. Yeah, but Sudafed it, it, like has an active ingredient that you don't need bleach to like exploit. Yeah, I knew yeah. a person who like. I don't know if maybe they thought it was safer or healthier instead of doing meth, just taking all the cold pills. Mm. Turns out oh, God. it wasn't safer. Uh, it fucked with their brain. <laughs> so uh, not safe. So, yeah, that, but that's the thing. No, no one is going to confuse bleach for mm. something you're going to drink or eat or whatever. So you can have as much as you want. I forget what's in Robitussin, but we had a guy at the mall chug. Robo tripping. A- yeah, chug a mm-hmm. bottle of it, and he was just like, "Hi, is a guy just like?" Yeah, it's essentially just like an alcohol derivative and some other crap. It just like it, you're basically just getting drunk on. Well, there's also codeine in it too. Yeah, I, and that's but it, it's mild. But so that's the thing. It, you might as well be sneaking like a four loco tall boy into a movie theater <laughs> for the the amount of effort it takes to get some Robitussin. Like, yeah. well, to be fair, he was asking for I think heroin before that, but he couldn't find any, so okay. he he settled for Robitussin. Right. Yeah, I guess if you're going from four loco to Robitussin, it's an easy flip of a coin. You know, if one or the other, I would take. But if you're going from heroin, Gateway drugs, I, yeah. I maybe maybe a four loco is not going to quench that heroin thirst. You know what I mean? You get stung by the brown hornet, and it doesn't matter how many brightly colored aluminum cans you sc- you smash against your head. <laughs> oh you still, man, do you, I know what you mean? Woo, you still want that brown horse, man? Woo! And not that I've ever done it, because you know where you get heroin. I don't even know where people get heroin. If I knew where people. Dude, drugs, I would go and check it out. Like, I'd, I'd wear a coat and look through the window and be like, ooh, sketchy. Yeah, like, I don't even know where people sell drugs. Like, Yeah, I'm sure, you know, it happens. Somebody, maybe oh, you have yeah. to, that's the thing. I Maybe you have to be cool to be offered drugs, and that's why no one ever offered me any. Because they're always like, know your dealer. Everybody's always like, know your dealer. And I'm like, how? I don't know any dealers. <laughs> I don't know anybody. Nobody ever offers me any drugs. Maybe that's it. Like, maybe you just have to act cool. And then people are like, this guy's cool. He wants some shrooms. And maybe, <laughs> re- like, repeatedly asking for it on essentially air uh, isn't working either. Because I I kept asking, like, where are the mushrooms, everybody? <laughs> I still can't like find school, <laughs> school and, like, the D.A.R.E. program, like, made it seem like everyone was just going to be handing me drugs. Yeah, Yeah, I I felt growing up that I was just going to at least once a day be telling someone no, I wasn't interested in drugs. And I don't think it's happened once. No, I think it's happened once or twice. I went to this pool party with a friend who was like, Mm -hmm. you want a trip? And I'm like, nope. Uh, (laughs) And a couple other times. But maybe that's why, too. I'm a buzzkill. Way to go. I've never been. No way, man. Yeah, but I I don't get things I don't get offered the things I want. Like I would love something low impact. I don't want to be like, hey man, would you like a hit of MDMA? Me having done literally nothing beforehand, and I'd be like, uh, no. <laughs> like let let's say all things considered, and we were in a safe place around people I trusted, and and all that maybe maybe. But it's me and you, and we met a couple months ago, and all these weirdos, no. No. <laughs> That's how bad things happen. That's how you end up on a true crime as the victim, you idiot. Yep. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to trip balls once at a casino pool. And then, you know what? It was just a smear after falling, quote unquote, out of the 32nd floor (laughs) with his underwear around his ankles. (laughs) Yeah, let me just. uh, Yeah, give me that pill. Fucking. Why not? Anyway, how do you feel about um, Bobby Flay? Oh, good guy. Like the food. You have, you've ever had his food? 
No. So you like looking at his food. You're a oh, fan yeah. of what his food looks like. I, I, I subscribe to his Instagram, but not his, like his food's Instagram. Like, so it's not him what? cooking it or any pictures of him. It's just the the plating on the dish. It's very tasteful. Uh, is that a pun? I It's so low impact, <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> uh, but, so whatever. Moral of the story is love or hate Bobby Flay because Krista doesn't like him. Mm-mm. I can kind of see it both ways. Like I get why people wouldn't like him because he's not much to look at and he seems like an asshole and his eyebrows do him zero favors, but he obviously has some sort of charisma and talent. Yeah, I'm not questioning his talent. He just seems like a big old dick. But And here's the thing. Now is the time. If you hate Bobby Flay, there's never been a better time to be a Bobby Flay hater. Because out there on the internet somewhere, this exists. So some, some time ago, the, a company called Hidden Valley, they make a, a product called Ranch. RJ, you familiar? I'm familiar with this, yes. Hidden Valley makes a ranch dressing. And Bobby Flay seems like he would not touch ranch dressing with. I don't think he would let one of his servants touch ranch dressing with a 10 foot clown pole. But somehow they found a dump truck big enough to bring a bunch of money to the front of his house to to make him do a commercial. And it obviously wasn't enough to make him enthusiastic. Uh, so th- I'm, I'm sure there's probably a full length one out there, but YouTube showed me a curated like eight second long one. So this was obviously the choicest bits of this Bobby Flay Hidden Valley Ranch commercial. And it so I'm, I'm going to give it to you verbatim because I've seen it so often. YouTube can't stop showing it to me because I think it knows I love comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's Bobby Flay and he's in this kitchen and he's like. <laughs> here's how you know if you like a food you say something nice about it in regards to yourself so he during the commercial he says hey you know everybody likes ranch we're gonna make a ranch quesadilla da, da, da. there's some hot shots of him making the quesadilla spreading some glamour shots of the ranch on there it's hidden valley blah 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 you get the glamour shot of the quesadilla he picks it up and what he should have said was mmm that tastes good and he says mm-hmm ranch (laughs) i and and with 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 those final words "Mm, ranch the door slammed shut on whatever remained of his integrity (laughs) like it was all just escaping and he's like "Eh, ranch cling there was no more left and the door slammed shut and he you can see it in his eyes is what i'm getting at i want you to watch this commercial don't take my word for it I want you to watch this commercial because at the end you see a little something die in his eyes and he goes, fuck, I, I hadn't even hit the skids yet. <laughs> like Bobby the, Flay the light just comes out of his eyes. Yeah. Bobby Flay took money from Hidden Valley Ranch and was like, you know, gourmet chef. No more. I now make Hidden Valley Ranch quesadillas like something you give a three year old and he makes food for people who wipe their ass on gold leaf. Mm-hmm. Hidden Valley Ranch. Like, this is not Shaq, right? This is not a man who lost all of his money, who has lost relevance. He's not doing general commercials. He's not doing, like, hot wing commercials. Like, this is Bobby fucking Flay. Who, no one around him, like, he's got so many yes men that they're like, uh, Hidden Valley wants to give me $14 billion to eat a quesadilla. I don't want to, but should I? Because it's a lot of money. And everyone's like... Yes, Bobby Flay. Do it, you Bobby Flay. It. You <laughs> should do it, Bobby Flay. And he goes, okay. Does and then say his whole name to him? They say, yes, Bobby. They make him. Hmm. Bobby Flay, your lord, o- eyebrow overlord. <laughs> he just makes it short to Bobby Flay. And then may- maybe they wanted it to happen. Maybe he, you know, was he- maybe he realized that he is just the product of a bunch of yes men. But you can see as he takes, it's like maybe as his teeth sink into that quesadilla and the actual ranch hits his tongue and he's like, oh my God. Ugh. Poor people he has the eat face this. of someone he has the face of someone who just like bit into a lemon yeah it's like imagine imagine you sign up your name to a product never seeing it tasting it touching it or feeling it and then having it ooze into your mouth for the first time realizing it's disgusting and having all of that captured on camera it's like biting into a dog turd and then realizing <laughs> your reputation's at stake and now you gotta go with it you're like Bleh! and you go fuck this is going to be the hardest 30 seconds of my life. 
It's like Krusty the Clown taking yes. a bite out of the Krusty Burger and then spitting it out. It's like, oh, yeah. I think I swallowed some of the juice. Yeah, but it's exactly like that. And it's Bobby Flay, and you can see him die a little inside. And that's the story of Bobby Flay and Hidden Valley Ranch. Do you have any Iron stories, RJ? Of Bobby oh, yeah. Flay? Yeah. No, no, just in general. I I just had a few notes that I wrote down on uh, this pad that I could review later, but I, I'll save it because I've talked a lot, and I feel like maybe you've got a story to tell. <laughs> Share with the children the story of your life. Well, it all started with a well, Nintendo NES. If you so okay, so here's the thing, RJ. So was your childhood also programmed in Japan in the eighties? Mine was made here in America, but apparently everyone I grew up with, their childhood was shipped over from Japan in a little plastic cartridge. Yes. That's so I weird. Was, I had a part bike. Of the Tetris. You had a bike. Uh, I, I mean, I had a bike. I would prefer to play video games than go out oh, on the no bike. Oh, no shit. Yeah, here's the thing. I think the problem is I was poor. Either that or my parents lied to me and just didn't want to buy me anything. I'm not sure. I cannot confirm. However, we never had video games growing up. So we had to make do with like toys and our imagination and like going to the park and shit. And I realized, obviously, when I'm like, oh, these video games that everyone else likes are kind of meh. I don't have the rose tinted glasses everybody else does. See, like my street, it was like all the kids that lived on my street were pretty much bullies. And I was the, the really? quiet, like, yeah. I guess they um, had to happen somewhere, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, and they, they all turned out to be, like, the drug addict kids uh, mm-hmm. of, like, the of the school. But, yeah. um, and I was always the, you gotta follow the rules, guys. So they would always go off on these adventures, and I would just be <laughs> like, I, I think I'm gonna stay behind. They and never I would just offer like... you drugs. <laughs> yeah, and they never offered me drugs. I was a little offended. Yeah, it was like, stand by me, and they're like, we're gonna go find a dead body. And RJ's like, I'm gonna go play Super Mario 2. <laughs> I made the right decision. Probably. Yes. I mean, there are a lot of diseases you can get from a dead body. <laughs> That's Not that I would know. And sharing needles. Yeah, and sharing needles with your heroin addicted <laughs> friends. I don't know, man. If you're still in the same age demographic where NES and heroin overlap, like you got a rough childhood. Holy mm. shit. I had a friend, like, we used to hang out with him every every day during the summer. And like we went to school together, so we would see each other in school. And then it was like a three year period going from middle school to high school that we didn't really, we went to different high schools, so we didn't really see him that often. Mm -hmm. And then we actually met him at the beach at 4th of July. And like, we ran into him and he asked us to borrow his cell phone. And we're like, yeah, sure. No problem. And we said, (laughs) and we said his, his name and he just looks at us and he's like, do I know you? And we're just like, we hung out for like four years straight. Like, uh no, forget it. And I mean, we what? still let him use the cell phone, but he did not even remember who we were. That's so wow. weird. Yeah, I mean, that's drugs can mess you up. <laughs> oh, so okay, drugs. I get it. Yeah, okay. So I have a similar story. However, I was remembered. Ooh. In fifth and sixth grade, my best friend at the time. He was sort of a weird kid. I was sort of a weird kid. He was like this clean cut Mormon kid, and I was, you know, whatever. Whatever the fuck you'd call me. Not from Japan. Not from Japan. And, uh, you know, when we went to junior high, he went somewhere else. I went somewhere else. And we just completely lost touch. I don't know how or why, but it was one of those things where, like, out of sight, out of mind, it is gone. So junior high comes and goes. Seventh, eighth, ninth. Don't give him a second thought for whatever reason. He was my fucking best friend in fifth and sixth grade. We both had the same bowl cut, for Christ's sake. (laughs) So we use the same bowl. Yeah, we <laughs> shared the same. Uh, it's a Captain Crunch bowl. Cut to high school, and I, he just walks by me, and I I don't want to like say his name or blow up his spot or whatever. I'm not gonna say his whole name, but he's walking by me, and I couldn't believe it. He like completely different. I, I Isaac, we looked at each other. He turns around. He goes, "Huh?" And he's like, "Whoa!" And it was one of those things where. He had changed physically so much, like some crazy shit had happened in between our last interactions. Because I remember him as a kid, like wearing an X-Men t-shirt and a bowl cut. And now he's like this, like, you know how, uh, like on PBS, like their idea of a bad boy. 
Like with the, yeah. the leather jacket and the kind of spiked up crazy hair. The and pants just sort of like big pockets. Yeah, like the reckless Jinko attitude. Jeans. Yeah, well, no, this was high school. This wasn't junior high. Oh, so okay. this is post Jinko jeans, but same sort of attitude. And I was like, what the fuck happened here? And I was like, okay, let's catch up. Never got a story. No, don't know what happened. All I know is that he, we went from swinging on the swings, singing Christmas carols about farting, right? <laughs> to him as holding, you do yeah like every fifth and sixth grader does and jumping off the swing and having fun with uh, the exo squad and ninja turtles to sitting across our high school in the park on a bench and watching him hold a lighter under his hand until like you hear the popping and i'm like dude what the fuck happened <laughs> i've changed dave <sighs> it's such a crazy thing I was really hoping that uh, when you said his name, it was going to be Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay! And- Bobby Flay. <laughs> what Bobby happened? Flay, what happened to you? Yeah. We, we went to high school. Some stuff. Yeah. He, he's what, 52 and I'm 37. <laughs> we were definitely in high school together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the Flay Master. That's what we used to call him anyway back in school. <laughs> <laughs> Flay a fish, we'd call him on on the fucking Fridays. <laughs> you know, to keep uh it's not kosher, obviously, because it's a Catholic thing. What do you say? It's just uh, meatless Friday. Or, no, there's gotta be a word for does, does anybody believe in religion anymore? There's gotta be a word for it. No fish on no all fish on Friday, right? Yes. No meat on Fridays. <clears throat> there's gotta be a word. Somebody's gotta but look it up. Fish meat? Yeah, you, well, it's no red meat on Friday. Uh, oh, RJ, okay. RJ, here's the thing. It's it's based on a technicality that l- the Italian fishing industry was tanking and the church was like, hey, we'll do you this solid. And then they turned to everybody and like, hey, guess what? Fish is super holy. You should eat a shit ton of it. It's and called they a say, Friday fast. But they still eat fish. and so You can fast. But it's got roots in the Catholic it's church marketing. wanting to save the fishing industry over like being a fisher of men. It's more like whiny actual fisher of fish. <laughs> it could have been so, pork. So if, the the church saved like what was it, Star Kiss? Uh yeah. I Charlie T- Charlie Tuna owes his life and his career to the Catholic Church. Cause you imagine what if it was um a, what you call it, like a swine herds thing and they're like hey man no one's eating bacon pope help and he's like ah bingo saturday's the thing so it's like fish on friday bacon saturday meat the rest of it whatever we don't give a shit and so but then that (laughs) opens the door and has a slippery slope because then you get like milkshake monday brought to you by mcdonald's and the pope (laughs) taco tuesday yeah taco tuesday from his holiness and he's like doing a slam dunk while like biting into a really rad taco (laughs) and then he just looks at the camera and goes hmm Ranch. I, <laughs> yeah, he mean ranch. I think I'm going to change the logo of the show. I'm going to have the Pope eating a taco while doing a slam dunk. I got to write <laughs> down my new be. Pope. He plus. rides the flamingo. There you go. Oh, yeah. Taco plus slam dunk. With a sad Bobby Flay in the background. Sad Bobby Flay. <laughs> With a, he's, he like he got ranch on his head. He's the coach, right? He's the coach, and instead of Gatorade, they're pouring hidden belly on his head. This is no longer a logo. This is now going to be like a Sistine Chapel style painting. This is going to have to be a wall style. Like it's going to be the Pope, me as the Pope, eating a taco, slam dunking as Bobby Flay in the background gets uh, hidden belly ranch dumped on him. Or you just make a short animation out of it, and that's your opening when you do live streams. Uh, we're we're talking real money here now, RJ. You, you like, go on Fiverr, right? But here's here's the thing: they don't tell you about Fiverr. Fiverr is where they start. They can charge you as much as sixty Fiverr, one hundred Fiverr, two hundred Fiverr. It, that's Fiverr is just where it starts. Fiverr is just a uh, minimum level. Le- Entry level garbage. And P.S. If someone is only charging five dollars, they are garbage, and you shouldn't buy from them. I bought from someone who charged me twelve dollars and almost felt ripped off. Twelver. Twelver. <laughs> I had to go over to Twelver. <laughs> that's the, that's the just whole to thing. get this damn flamingo. Yeah, I went to Fiverr, and there was an external link to Twelver, and then I had to download that PDF. There's so many formats, RJ. You, you can never keep up. No, like 
everyone's like, oh, why'd you send this to me in a tiff? And I'm like, I don't know. That's just what <laughs> I don't the program know what I just did. Me. Yeah. <laughs> People love these format conversations. However, so let me tell you about this uh, thing that I just got, because maybe uh, you or someone you love will find a use for it. Uh, Hit me. It, in regards to this show, I thought I need something that because I always carry around notebooks and these papers are everywhere and I'm constantly having to bring pens and uh, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I'm cycling. And here's the thing. Not only like because let's be real, carrying around a single notebook to write notes in is not a big deal. But if you're a sentimental idiot or if you're a pack writer or a hoarder, you keep your shit. So I'm literally right now staring at a stack of notebooks. 25 high no. half of them are full of show notes because i've been doing the show for so long yep i can't bring myself to get rid of them so there they sit so i thought ah i'll buy a tablet of some kind that only takes notes like you can save whatever so you can put an sd card in it you can write a bunch of notes in it and save a million pages and it'll just be one thing forever that doesn't exist however i found a thing that's like an edge of sketch for adults. Maybe you've heard of something similar like a bamboo pad or something. A boogie board. Boogie board. Oh, okay. I was going to say bamboo. Like, Isn't that the drawing tablet? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the bamboo pad is the drawing pa ta uh, tablet. The, the, the boogie board is essentially like an adult Etch-A-Sketch, and I'm holding one in my hand. You can't see it, obviously. I bought this this little 7-inch one to start. I'm to imagining. Give, give, to give it a shot, and I was like, eh, I don't know. This is weird. It's got no save function. All you can do is write, and it's, it's a, again, an Etch-A-Sketch. You write on it as much as you want. You hit the delete button. Everything is gone forever. Nothing gets saved. But if you want to now, RJ, maybe you can relate because PJ and I had a conversation about how often we wrote and maybe still write our signature. <laughs> Are you one of us that still write signatures? Like when, like if you're sitting there and you're like spacing or whatever, and you sit and like, if you, if there's a pen nearby, you'll basically practice your signature like maybe when you were a teenager you did it absolutely not i wrote my signature oh my more God. today than i've probably written in the last like three years <sighs> uh, pj you are not because he totally agreed with me on this one why would i practice i'm never i'm barely gonna <laughs> use it i when i sign for my like credit card or whatever at the store i literally just put my initials well, like, yeah. when you were bored in math class, like, what did you ever doodle or, like, draw oh, pictures? I, I mean, doodling, yes. I'll doodle. So, so, but you never slipped into, like, doing your autograph? No. That's so strange. You're a weirdo, RJ. <laughs> like, you're getting stranger and stranger all the time. Remember the, at the <laughs> beginning of the show when I said he was unusual? You can see it, audience. You can see it right here. Moral of the story, <laughs> we're getting back to, we're getting off topic, how weird RJ is. But moral of the story is... <laughs> What if was the topic? The board. Oh, yeah. Board. Oh, the boogie board? The boogie yeah. board. The boogie board. But this is a cheap knockoff version. It essentially, like, if you look at boogie board, there's a million ripoffs. And it's essentially what it is. There's got to, there had to have been a product on Nickelodeon in the 90s that was essentially this thing I'm holding. Because they market this essentially same thing for kids Oh, God damn it. I, and it's black. I know every goddamn Nickelodeon commercial and can pull it right now, except for this one. I cannot think of the name. This is Gripping Radio. Thank you for coming to the show. <laughs> Maybe I'll Wait, talk I'm more still, about the ranch. <laughs> I'm still wondering what this would be used for. Uh, like, just if like, you're just okay, gonna... so let's scratch paper. Like, if you ever need scratch paper or you're looking for something to write down, or, or whatever like you can literally write on this and erase it a hundred thousand times and all it takes is a little cr225 battery so what how happens? much does this thing cost this was ten dollars oh okay it's a ten dollar thing that comes with a stylus you like i made all the notes for this show on this thing when i'm done with it i'll hit the delete button and then we'll move on to the next show Okay. What happens if you write something down and accidentally hit the delete button and when you put it in your bag? So it, there's a lock button. They did think of that. There's oh, a lock good. button. So like uh, when I was writing this uh, show note section, I did lock it to be like, ah. So, but the thing is, you also have to be careful because if it is just like an Etch-a-Sketch. So if you like your nails, fingernails touch it, it'll, it'll leave marks. Yeah. So it is like anything you touch it with is like having a million ballpoint pens. So it does teach you to be careful. 
Uh, you can just but, hang it on your fridge. And yeah, just write, hang it hey. on your fridge. You can doodle, like, if you want to draw and you don't want to waste it. Like, let's say you want to practice drawing and you don't want to go out and buy a big stack of paper that you know is going to be just a bunch of misattempts. You can use this thing a billion times. But you can't save your work. Because can't, then no, you but, but it it's again. for things that you don't need to save. That's yeah. the thing. It's for lists. It's for doodles. It's for like running around taking notes for something. Like, let's say, oh, I'm out on the town. I want to remember something. Or you keep by the bed. Or you say, oh, I want to draw a picture of some boobs. You go doodly doo. But someone comes in the room and you're going to be embarrassed. Bam, delete. Gone. <laughs> let's say you're sitting there like, oh, I'm my, you know, your back is to a wall. Your face is the door. You want to draw some rude images, some, some wieners and some, you know, other, other pictures you know, depicting female and or male anatomy. Someone comes in, your mom comes in. Hey, what's on that tablet? Bam, bam, nothing. So it's, it's the upgrade from the briefcase that explodes after you read what's inside. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's kind of like a self-destruct. Well, no, not necessarily self-destructing because it's not, it will not destroy itself. If you, if someone rips it from your hands before you hit that delete button, all bets are off. <laughs> but I'm telling you, like if, if you're one of these people who, when you are sitting, have to goof around with a pen or whatever, or you just have to take a note, or let's say like I was toying around with the idea of doing like mini reviews for shows. This would be enough to do like a page of notes, review a show, be like, ah, now a tree was saved. Click. And, I was annoyed because I had to watch an episode of Cobra Kai. Wait, I heard nothing about or nothing but good things about that. We can't uh, get into it because I ruin watched it. so much Cobra Kai, and then my we co- watched so much Cobra Kai, but then did not watch the last episode of the yeah, first season because I was supposed to review it, and then the reviewer I was supposed to review it with fell off, and I don't want to watch it because I did not like it. Mm. But if someone wants to watch it and review it, I will again. Because I've got literally as here, here's a real life example, RJ. I sitting here in front of me, my Cobra Kai notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages. I have eight pages. This is typed in 12 font, single spaced. Yeah, but you can't put all of that in that on that little tablet. Right. So anyway, moral of the story is. Uh, maybe not the moral, but the, the butterfly of this story is. So the tablet was the caterpillar. If you're keeping track, tablet's the caterpillar. This Cobra Kai concoction, that's the cocoon. Here's the butterfly. Ordered a tablet afterwards. Just going to download a notepad app and buy a stylus. So boom, th- one will serve a purpose. The other will serve another purpose. Uh, so I'm probably going to push both. However... These trees are still dead, and Cobra Kai I still watched. And I got to talk about it with somebody. So if you want to talk about it, RJ, I... Good news. I've got some pages. So how about this? Because I've never seen it. So I'm just going to watch the last episode of season one. And then... Uh, no, we can we do have the to review. review it together. Listen, if we're going to do a 50-50, you're going to watch from fucking whatever. Four on. And I'm also going to take that time back from you somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you just like time mage it out of me. Maybe, maybe, maybe that would be. Oh my god, that would be a RJ. You're an accidental genius. Well, Here, I'm good for something. Here's what I'm gonna do. Every time somebody wants to review something that I don't want to, I'll be like, "Sure, I'll review it with you. I'll do the last episode. You do the first nine. <laughs> And so by the, by the time you're and describing nine to me, I'll be able to describe the 10th one. You'll get the closure. And I wouldn't have to have watched all the uh, other episodes. Bam. I think yeah. that would be kind of cool, actually, because you <laughs> would have no context for anything. Nothing makes sense until you hear your partner describe mm-hmm. everything. And then you're just like, oh, this all makes it's coming together. And then you're That's... just like, you know what? Cobra Kai is a uh... great show. That's that's sort of the brilliance, not to toot my own horn, but that was sort of the brilliance of my idea behind 50-50, is like the, the, the person watching the second half is totally in the dark until they hear the first half from the person who watched the first half, and the first person is in suspense, so it's like a nice, and obviously neither of them are going to retell the story in any competent manner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So it's going to be like two grandmas who have both lost their hearing, neither of whom speak each other's language, trying to ask each other where the bathroom is. <laughs> and only more so lopsided if I'm doing a 90-10 situation. I like it. I might do that. Maybe we'll do an episode. Maybe I'll make that a Patreon perk. If you give me $20, I'll make you do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will watch the last episode for or whatever him. you want. For <laughs> For twenty dollars, I'll describe the last. Well, oh my god, what a kick in the dick! Like, imagine if you really enjoyed the series, and then to have me explain to you the last episode, essentially spoiling it. Woof! Yeah. And it cost you twenty dollars. You'd have to be a hardcore idiot. I mean, <laughs> crazier things have happened on the internet. Yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll write it on this tablet here, and if it if it gets erased, I'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll try to remember the Pope and the taco. Well, you'll edit this and be like, oh, yeah. And then right oh, that's right. we, have then. A, we have a saved version of our conversation. Right. And that's, that's the great thing about uh, this tablet, too, is after I say the things on the tablet, I don't need the tablet anymore because I said them in the microphone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I need them again, I can write them again. They're very easily transferable. I was wondering what you were talking into. Yeah. Language incredibly versatile you can write it you can say it i guess that's it. it oh yeah you can think you it, think it yeah. three th three whole things have you done any of them today check it out not, not since i started this podcast it's in a book <laughs> <laughs> it's reading rainbow um now rj i don't think we have enough time to go through the the new the non-canonical, I'm going to call it FFOP 5-2, the oh PJ-1. I was like, this entire time, it's been 53 minutes, I, and I'm like, oh my god. I'm not, if, if, if I'm going to call this the FFOP 5-2, I'm going to do a better job. I half-assed these. So this is non-canonical. This is like uh, that every American Dad episode where it's a dream or wherever the one, this is like, this is one we're going to have to hit the reset button on and pretend it never happened. <laughs> So uh, just, what I'm actually, do, I'm just going to hit the delete button and this whole yeah. thing's just going to go away. So imagine this is the universe of Star Wars that was in the books that Disney completely cut out. Mm, the legacy. It's, got it. Yeah. It's canon now. But as soon as I want, it's fucking gone. So I'm going to. Uh, so we got five. I'm going to get I'm going to pick one. We'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll get it through two. Okay. So maybe we'll keep it sort of close to the, you know, in the family. Give me something that you want to do, want to try. It could be a food or an activity. I don't give a shit. Something you want to do but haven't done yet. But still, every time you think of it, you're like, ah, when I get the time. So kind of, I feel like this is an upgrade to sewing. I want to try leather working. Um... RJ the leather daddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know the end product. <laughs> Why, well, obviously, as soon as you said leather, I was like, it wasn't even like, oh, I wonder. It was, yeah, obviously. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be for costumes or anything. No, it's like, obviously, RJ is such a freak in, a freak in the, the sheets and a man on the streets. A gentleman, if you will. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> I, I arrived at it backwards, but it's there. So leather I feel like work. it's so much more complex than, uh, than sewing. <sighs> I, full disclosure, I've also looked into that because it does seem like a craft that not only seems like it would be fun and there's a, a decent amount of artistry to it, it, it yields like a real usable product, like leather goods last a long ass time. But one of the downsides is like all the chemicals and the tools and shit take up a lot of room uh, yeah. and are dangerous and expensive. And I have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> So I've got to go. You just with make low him impact. some baby chaps, and you're all yeah, set. Yeah, little baby chaps, <laughs> little two year old chaps, and he runs down the hall. Howdy, partner. Yep, we got him a one of those little Shetland ponies. We say that he um, <laughs> <laughs> say he grew up. We found him out on the range, and he came with the uh, his own horse and everything. He just where the deer and the antelope play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he rode in into town one day, and he said, "Howdy, y'all!" And he lives with us ever since. <laughs> Mini Pecos Bill is his name. So leather work. What I I guess the it kind of a layup, I guess. Is there anything deeper to it beyond like just more accoutrement for the costuming? Nah, just costuming. 
I feel like it would, like you said, it would just be a, a cool addition or uh, something that would last a little bit longer than probably anything I would make from sewing. Uh, yeah, and, and that's part of it too. You know, obviously everybody knows I hide it well, but there's a lot of things I like that are very nerdy. So that being said, full disclosure, I don't want anybody to gasp too hard when you hear this. Back when I used to go to anime conventions and, oh. and wait, RJ, there's more and dress up as Wolfwood from Trigun with a full size, maybe seven eighths scale cross. Uh, you know, I was into that shit. I appreciated the artistry of the costumiers and all those other uh, seamstresses and blah, 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 blah. The thing is like a Hanes t-shirt is harder wearing than this thing that you're going to wear once that you're God, you know, you're praying to God every second of your, you know, you're wearing it. It doesn't fall apart because it's handmade by someone you never met and they sent it to you in the mail and you got it three seconds before the convention started. <laughs> So, Half the seams are missing. and Yeah, I, it's always a crapshoot. So I always stuck to the ones that I could make myself. Hence, Wolfwood, obviously, easy as shit. So I, I see making it yourself. And, and because you want the quality, right? It's it's a crapshoot. But if you can do it yourself. That is man. true. That's that's why I'm, I'm practicing with the pillows and the dice bag. So I get my technique down. Yep, and then I can you'll start. Be making, you know, uh, armor for pillows. You'll be making cod pieces for pillows. <laughs> T-shirts for pillows, chaps. chaps for pillows. Just every pillow in your house will be chapped and t-shirted and skirted. <laughs> little made out. I can fight a battle. Now, let me ask you this. I feel it's only natural that it is going to come up. So I'm not even asking if. I'm going to just say how many times on average do you think? So when you're putting a costume together and you're like, you know, putting the pieces together and you're holding it up and holding it against yourself, like obviously. You know, you're like, oh, putting it together in your head. How many times from start to finish do you imagine yourself fucking while wearing that costume? Like seven a dozen and a half. more? Seven and a half? That seems yeah. like a little, like very little. Because let's be real. These costumes are going to take a long time. Yeah. Right? I mean, you're going to be checking them out. You're going to be holding them up. Like if there's props, you're going to be painting them. You're going to be like admiring them. You strike some like, poses. Yeah. I mean, it's got to happen. The complexity of the outfit must make it go up incredibly inversely. That or the skimpiness. It really depends on the costume. Uh, yeah, I imagine. So so I, I guess I, I'm asking a very strange question because the scale is not uh, a linear one. It is a circular one and it's all gray. So I guess what I'm saying is on average, when... You're making or putting together a costume. Pick whatever. It doesn't even have to be a sexy one. <laughs> you, you know, you're going to think about it. <laughs> All these Trigun characters. All the Trigun characters. Every, I feel like that, but that, I'm not saying you specifically, RJ. I'm saying humans must do this because every brosif who walks into every spirit Halloween store, Halloween Express, and looks at all the costumes is imagining getting wasted and plowing someone in that costume. And like the fun it'll be and like, cause let's be real. No matter who you are, no matter how stuffy you are, wearing a costume is fun. It is. And when you, we all allow ourselves to live outside of our uh, norms a little bit, you get into that costume mode, you get a little weird, you say, well, what would it like to get busy in this thing? And you immediately see the flaws in the costume. <laughs> <laughs> that that should be what everybody's costume choice should entail. Like, every time I get into a costume, literally, that's the first thing I think about. Would this be easy to fuck in? Because if it isn't, don't wear it. Because if it's not going to be easy to fuck in, then it's probably going to be a pain in the ass to eat in. It's going to be a pain in the ass to move around in, to interact with people with. Like if there's makeup or whatever, like if you put on something and you're like, yeah, this is great right now. But if I were to fuck, how would it look? Would my makeup be fucked? Would it be a pain in the ass to get it on and off? Call it. The last costume I wore, I actually was walked around the convention. <laughs> I actually had to Kim walk suit. around the, the convention blind because I had a mask on and I couldn't wear my glasses underneath it. So I basically uh, was just like, hand on oh. you know whoever was around me's shoulder and i was like guiding around you had you had basic vision though right uh, i mean shapes really. colors light well you yeah completely I, mean, blind? I wasn't i wasn't bumping into people right i'm saying horrible right i'm but i'm my my 
not my question, but my sticking point was like, you were like, I'm walking around blind. So I'm thinking you're wearing a mask with no eyes or you're wearing a blindfold. It's, it was like transparent. It was a yellow film in front of my face, pretty much. Who is this character? Maya the Bee? No, it was a character from uh, My Hero Academia. It was, um, uh, yeah, it. yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> but the, the best part was, you know, you meet other people who dressed up as the same characters in the same show. Um, and so they stopped and like, you know, we got pictures, whatever. And then they, uh, they wanted, uh, our Instagram tags. And so they go, and then, so they got, uh, the first one and then they turned to me. I couldn't see their face. Like it was just a blur to me. So I had no (laughs) idea. They're staring at me two feet in front of me, just like (laughs) smiling and staring and just standing there. And I'm just blankly staring off (laughs) into the distance. And then probably someone, a blind person. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> then someone nudges me and they're like, give your Instagram handle. That, that seems like the dropping of a ball of a friend. Because like, <laughs> you, I, I realize RJ, you're like, oh man, I, I couldn't believe how embarrassed I was that uh, you couldn't see. Like right. s- s- your friends all stood around probably watching being like, what an idiot. <laughs> see, see, can see how this long guy. He can, how long he lasts. See, I, now I would, here's what I would try. Because, you know, looking at people at comic-con freak me out i would like to walk through comic-con as maybe like penance or some character who has a mask that covers their entire face yeah maybe be like led around on a pole or something or a leash so so i wouldn't bump into something i don't care (laughs) on a pole someone's like jabbing you from behind (laughs) but no like a not like jabbing me, but like something that was attached to like a, a, my belt or something. I don't know. I don't know how you would work it out. Have a leash. Yeah, <laughs> a leash, something. I think that would be an interesting experience to just hear and bumble around and obviously smell. You're going to be at Comic-Con. You'll be smelling Comic-Con. So you would be you know, experiencing all these things but not seeing what's going on. I wonder what that would be like. It would just be like walking through a very level garbage dump. Remember when I went uh, as Silk Spectre? Oh, mm-hmm. my God. These nerdy guys. Hey, Silk Spectre. And it's weird when they call you by your, like, Character person name. that you're dressed up as. You got to get I'm in like, that headset what? mindset, though. Could I take a picture with you? I'm like, oh, God. Okay, sure. Yeah, I yeah. I, I don't. I mean, yeah, I, I shouldn't say I don't. I mean, I do. I, I say I don't because it's so sad. I, I want to say I don't identify. But I, I get why you would run up to someone who's like not famous, just in a recognizable costume and be like, hey, can I get a picture? I get the whatever. Like you see a master chief who's like, you know, looks like a Corvette that exploded all over a dude. It looks so good. Great. Run up and take a picture of that dude. Like Krista's costume came out of a bag. Like yeah. it wasn't handmade or anything. And she had dudes falling over their fear boners trying to get to her. <laughs> Oh my god! It was like you know. Um, it was like a giant tumbleweed of nerds just <laughs> rolling over. Yeah, it it was like uh, it's like a weeble wobble. These nerds would run toward her. They'd trip them up in their shoelaces. They would balance like their boner would hit the ground. They would teeter forward. They'd <laughs> smash their head on the ground and then collapse. Uh, yeah, little fear boners and they're like picture click click click, click from the floor. <laughs> 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 ah, but enough about nerds. Back to RJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> RJ, what uh, what are some of the games you've been playing lately? I've been I picked up a few recently that I'm going to be reviewing, and I'm excited about. But I like oh. to hear what you're playing. No oh, God, see, I always feel bad at this part because I play like old games. Like I just finished Final Fantasy three, and I uh, went well, into Final Fantasy four. That's totally fine because right now we are simpatico because I am putting together or still putting together. Uh, a retro pie system. Mm-hmm. So I'm going through all those old games and you know, I'm digging like right now. I think the game I keep, I have come back to more often than not. And if I could do it competitively, I would is frogs and flies for the Atari 2600. Mm-hmm. That is, I'm not sure, sure if I'm familiar with that one. Oh my God. It is. I've come so close to beating you n- once. It, it laughable because I was yeah. one of my eyes had dirt in it and the other one a bee stung. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So it was close for that reason alone. <laughs> However, it is it is the most simple game in the world. You're a frog. You jump from lily pad to lily pad. There are only two. 
and you eat flies. They buzz in and out randomly. It is so much fucking fun, though. So it's yeah. just who whoever eats the most flies? Yeah. yeah. It's, you get, uh, it's a day-night cycle, so you start, it's a blue sky every, I don't, I don't even know how long it lasts. I don't know. But there's like, you know, five whatever, minutes. four or five shades of blue. When it goes black, your frogs hop away. Whoever ate the most flies is the winner. The end. And a little fly buzzes out with a little banner. <laughs> So I need to buy a Raspberry Pi off of you once you do this, and then we have oh, I've to done it. challenge. I've got it's it's so fun. Oh my god! Like it, and all your that that's the thing. The simplest gaming mechanics will keep me glued, and I can't even tell you which ones or why. Like jumping back and forth from little pet to little pet, eating flies is completely fascinating to me. However, like a similar game mechanic, like breakout where you're just essentially moving something to hit something essentially mo just moving other pixels in the exact same way i'm like hate it <laughs> sucks i i remember kaboom and combat i have been playing also halo 2600 it it's a uh, fan hack from 2010 and it is super fun also, surprisingly. I can't believe how fun it is. Now, is that based off the first Halo, the second Halo? Like, uh, what, like... it's I guess it's essentially Halo 1 for the Atari 2600. Oh, my God. So Weird. you're Master Chief, and you're running around, you pick up guns, you're shooting grunts, you're shooting elites. Uh, there's a fuck ton of them. I still can't beat it. You can only shoot one bullet at a time, but when your bullet hits motherfuckers, they explode in Grand Atari fashion. <laughs> I love it. It's maybe the best Halo game I've ever played. Oh, is that the one where you go from like square to square? Yeah, yeah. Trees and shit? Yeah. yeah. And okay. it, it is a little, the only thing that moves on Master Chief are his little legs. And they go, dee -dee 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 -dee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, so, yeah, I. I totally identify with the old games because I'm I'm revisiting all of them. They they honestly need to take that sound effect and put it into the new games. So as he's walking, he's a diddly diddly diddly. <laughs> if only RJ, you you know, from your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> so anything else besides the old uh, Final Fantasies? Nothing new? And playing any indies? Nothing AAA? Nothing? Uh, I I mean I bought Miles Morales for the PlayStation 5 and it's literally sitting next to the PlayStation 5. What is there a power tool behind you? It's yes. Water it's the water heater. Jeez. We talked <laughs> about this. You know, I might as well just eat a roll now. <laughs> uh, yeah, eat that roll, you motherfucker. <laughs> you know this is, is the third time it's gone off, right? Ah. Uh, well, I haven't heard it until now. Yeah, this one this one feels much more intense than the last. Somebody showering. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe that's a thing. Maybe every episode I should just preface and be like, you know, this is a mood podcast. Like, it's me, like, tapping into someone who's in a boiler room or, like, in, in the in the back room of, a like, the manager at a Chili's. You can, like, left the door open while he was counting the till or, you know, whatever. Everybody's uh, recording area has a very specific, unique, and interesting soundscape, I'll say. You were warned. Oh, no, I know. That's why I'm uh, not angry about it. <laughs> Just mildly annoyed. <laughs> oh, shit. So, you got that uh, little Arthur hand going on. Little Arthur hand? Oh, yeah. You never saw the meme? Yeah. When you said a little Arthur hand, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, well, I've got a, uh, yeah, I've got a little Arthur hand going on. Yes. RJ, you know I love memes. I mean, you used to be our memeologist, you know. Yeah, yeah. What happened to that? Did you just... I thought you fired me. I... W th there was no real communication. I said, you're hired. You said, great. One meme was produced. I said, nice work. You said, more will come. Here we are today. First of all, there was there was two memes. Oh, shit. Sorry. I just want to remind you. <laughs> okay. You cut my Sorry. workload in half there. It's It's only been four months... And you were able to produce half as many memes. <laughs> and I'm cranking about like fucking crazy, RJ. What's your excuse? Your face is on everything. Oh exactly. So what? And so, mine. Yeah, I go out of my way to further personalize and customize my memes. All you have to do 
is pull random shit and put something you heard on it. <laughs> and here Isn't you that just are. Like copyright infringement. Uh, and in what? Like, well, what no, because I guess I guess you're you're altering it by putting your face on it. Yeah, it's me. I'm an app. Yeah. I well, it doesn't matter how it happens. Moral of the story is. The the craftsmanship is there. The care is there. I mean, the care was there, RJ. What happened? You you ran off. You I, fell in love with this water heater that I, I hear say, that I hear I live, from so much. I live in a water heater room. Yeah, you're living in a supply closet. You're 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 uh, living with an upside down mop with a face drawn on it. I'm starting to worry. <laughs> Listen, don't talk about Moppy that way. He's making <laughs> and, costumes for it. Now. And also, not not to poke holes in this, but if you're going to live in a fantasy world, why refer to your fake wife as Moppy? Like, <laughs> further pointing out, like, this is a little crazy, wink, wink, like, but I fuck a mop. Mm. <laughs> in costume. Also, let's be real. Like, if you're going to fuck a mop, there's nowhere to hide the fleshlight. They would see the duct tape. They would see, like, let's say you put it in a... Uh, Oh, here, obviously, you stick the mop inside of a punching bag. Mop stays out of the top. There's the head. You insert the fleshlight into the punching bag. Yep. <laughs> RJ, I hope you're writing this down on that tablet uh, that I um, recommended earlier. I got it on my Etch-A-Sketch. I'm, I'm twisting those knobs. <laughs> oh, my God. Salacious. That's going to be a sound drop next episode. Uh, all right, RJ. <laughs> So why don't we start wrapping it up? Uh, let's do like, I know obviously most of my earlier talking was a staff recommendation, but do you have a staff recommendation for our listeners? Do you have anything new or anything old you want to spread? What's up? I am. I actually started posting on social media, Ken. It's Boring. amazing. What? No, I'm just kidding. You, you uh, love all my, my <laughs> sewing creations. Uh, yeah, so um, are so. Let me ask you this: are, are we are we moving from a video gaming persona to a larp? Not maybe not larping, but a cosplay. Larping's a different thing. Cosplay persona type thing now. I feel like video games are still going to be the main focus, but it's going to cover all aspects of my life, whether it's video games or sewing or boiler rooms. It's going to be great. I'm- I'm wondering, RJ, because we've talked about marketing and you know social media and stuff, and I, I here's the thing. Uh, there's no way I am going to stick to one thing because I, in my real life, I can't stick to one thing, one hobby. Like, over the course, like, may, I tell a lie. This show, if you want to consider this a hobby... Uh, longest running hobby I've ever had during the life of this show I've seen dozens of hobbies uh, sprout and die like weeds in a garden so you know, I, I don't know how to, where to focus on Like if I, if I might, and this show has obviously backed that up because I talk about everything that we go through and maybe that's not a great strategy because uh, nobody wants to hear about a bunch of random crap that you're doing seemingly at random uh, that you never really follow through on Maybe that's the show's problem. FFLP, <laughs> never following through. I realize that those for, letters don't add up. Six years. Six. Six. <laughs> six I don't know. Years. This was, it was 11? 2009. What year is it now? It is 2037. 20, <laughs> so it was off by a couple. Yeah. Six, seven, eight. I, I think everything after 2010 is just sort of the same. And then from 2020 on will be a different thing. 20 year chunks is good. Let's just stop calling them decades. It's a uh, decade. 20 years is good. Because you got to have a little buffer on each side to shake off the previous decade's crap and to sort of slide into the new decade's shoes. The double decade. Yeah. A do decade. You know, you Dungeons and Dragons nerds, we, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> ro- ro- roll that do decade, uh, Hedron, uh, RJ. <laughs> so, what was your uh, recommendation? Myself. I actually, oh, yeah. for once, am posting stuff. Right. So give us uh, uh, social media such as, I assume, Facebook? No, because no. everybody's old and they always tell me to get off that. But maybe oh, Instagram right. and Twitter? Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. Instagram. Insta- <laughs> Instagram. Instagram. Tweetar. The, the tweet machine. I'll be tweeting them, folks. I should really start making TikTok videos, but I haven't yet. Hit. Yeah. 
I've you know, made one. I here's the thing. When when every piece of marketing material I am shown about TikTok is a 12 year old shaking her ass to a explosion of smiley faces and hearts. Do you think that's going to appeal to me? YouTube, <laughs> Google, whoever is making this ad and you read all of my information because you have it. You say this is a, a single, not single, married white male in his late 30s. Uh, and they're running through the TikTok ads to show me. They're like, yep, 12-year-old shaking her ass. Let's make this guy feel sick to his stomach and gross, even though he can't stop it because we're not going to put a skip button. So he's going to have to flip his phone over. So in case someone walks in, they don't think he's a perv. Come join TikTok. It worked. I'm on TikTok. Sold. <laughs> Sold. That's what happened. So, RJ, what do you recommend? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give us your Instagram handle. Uh, RJ Snacks, RJ S-N-A-X, mm-hmm. uh, pretty much on all social medias, and uh, yeah. Are you streaming on Twitch? Uh, going to be starting soon. Uh, what What are we looking at? Are more, more Final Fantasy 3 and 4, uh, uh, hopefully? <laughs> <laughs> Probably Resident <laughs> Evil. Uh, I don't know. Like one of the remakes? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I usually, when I, I feel like anytime I get back into streaming, I like to start off with Resident Evil 4, because it's a game I'm familiar with, it's fun to me still, and just to get myself going. And then after that, we'll see where it goes. Uh, I've never actually played Resident Evil 7. I want to play that this, one on stream. This shows how, like, you know, everybody who look points to me and has complaints about my gaming taste, they have valid evidence with what I am about to tell you because the first Resident Evil I legitimately enjoyed was five and that's like the one everybody hates <laughs> so I don't know what to tell you like I jumped in on five and I was like uh fine I'll try a Resident Evil like I hadn't played one since two got five for whatever 20 bucks I was like oh whoa this is kind of fun all right it's you know it's it's dumb enough for an idiot like me an over-the-shoulder shooter like they'd worked all the bugs out by then but little did I know that since four was the one that everyone had broken their neck sucking their its dick off, like by the time five rolled around, they're like, oh, it sucks. And I had no idea coming, you know, fresh eyed and doughy onto the scene being like, five's a fun game. And then everyone coming and kicking me in the dick and being like, no, you're wrong. Four's the good one, you idiot. And I was like, what? I never heard of it. And I should have obviously five couldn't have gotten there without a four. I get it. I'm culpable for some, but still. I enjoyed five, but um, maybe I'm just bad at the game. But I know the the weapons you can upgrade them, and you would like grind. Well, yeah, but on this one you could replay levels. Um, so I felt like I had to like grind for gems and gold and whatever to get enough money to upgrade the weapons to uh, beat the. I, I don't. I felt are we I had about to... five still. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I get that, and I get the grind of it all. However, there are... How am I going to liken this game? Okay, so, like, everybody loves a sandbox game because you can go and do and blah, 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 blah. Here's a thing people also fucking love. Marble Madness. Do you know what Marble Madness is, RJ? Yeah. That's it's a hard game. For those... Well... I'm talking about the IRL thing. So obviously you don't know Marble Madness. No, I don't. IRL, uh, before the video game Marble Madness, uh, we had basically a bunch of plastic pieces that were tubes. It was basically like a huge playground slide. The perfect size for marbles. And you could make a crazy, like there were jumps and loops and yada yada. It was like like a matchbox race cars track for marbles. It was Marble Madness. And... It's not a sandbox. The marble's going the same way every fucking time, but it's a blast every time. That's what Resident Evil 5 was to me. You drop the marble in at the start. I know exactly where that marble is going every fucking time, but it's fun because it does a little jump. It does a little swirl. It goes into the part that's like a toilet that goes... And then it goes kaplunk. Like, there are elements of it, even though they're the same. It's gimmicky, yeah, but it's like mousetrap also. Like I people love say, mousetrap. Like mousetrap. I, I say Marble Madness because it always worked and Mousetrap never fucking worked. Correct. So I say Marble Madness because that worked every fucking time. <laughs> it took a million years to put it together and then by the time you go to play it. The first thing pulled out of the cardboard, yeah. which then pulled the second thing. Uh-huh. This always worked. So that's All why the I say. gears mess up. Yeah. Uh-huh. There are some games like that. And that's what I feel uh Resident Evil 5 is. It's not 
Like, even at the hardest difficulty, it's not hard. You're letting gravity do the work. You're the marvel. Like, even the shittiest... I have pulled the shittiest player I've ever played with through that game because it is a marble madness type game. As long as you're there, gravity will pull your ass to the bottom. That is no way to talk about Krista. I, listen, I said... Not specifically the worst players in the world, RJ. Look at you did. Now you offended my wife. <laughs> How dare you? In my culture, we murder people for that. White trash culture. <laughs> uh, so, um, what else have we got? Anything new? Anything you want to share before we're out of here? I don't know when we're going to talk to you next because it's been 17, 18 years since the last time. Probably like 20 years later. All right. But so by then I'll have an awesome, I'll have an awesome uh, Marble Madness setup going. Yeah, there's nothing better. I'm telling you, like, whatever. Matchbox cars, yeah, the Marble Madness. Here's the thing. That's where it's at. The the perfect thing. Let me talk about Marble Madness just a little bit longer, uh, RJ. <laughs> Here's the thing about Marble Madness, because again, I will liken it to the Hot Wheels or the Matchbox cars, like tracks. Here's the thing about Marble Madness. Your your car goes flying. The, the car needs to be on its wheels. If it can fall over, it can stumble, it can crash. You can't fuck up with a marble. It's round. It'll never flip over. It always is flipping over. So it'll go zany. It can go all over the place. It can go up walls. Marbles are fun. Cars, eh. But marble madness. And that was the, that was the crazy thing about it, too, is sometimes you'd, as a kid, you'd be like, I, I know that this piece is empty at the bottom. So you pull it out. Especially like when my brother made something, he would always, always fucking. So here's a short story. I know I said the show was ending. <laughs> short story. There was a little piece that was uh, like a little ladder, a uh, uh, ladder, a slide. It goes whoop. It had two pipe chunks. One was blocked so the marbles would stop and roll out the opening of the thing you attached to. And one was hollow. And that was always at the end of everything because it had a little, le uh, you know, the slide made it fun at the end. So I would always swap it to the other side. So instead of going down the slide, it would just fall straight down. Ruined it every time for my brother. <laughs> they had a, they, did you know they have a Marble Madness for Game Boy Color? Yeah, Marble Madness came out on the NES, so I'm sure. Like, oh. nothing came out on the NES that hasn't been, you know, risen from its grave 400 or 500 times. These kids are kind of cool looking. Who? <laughs> the Marble Run sets on Amazon. They're cool kids playing the cool kids. Oh, oh, I heard kids they're... also. Yeah, I heard kids. I was like, there's what the fuck do I playing get? Playing with them, but there's it's a kit. Oh, okay, like mittens. These are cool kids. <laughs> Kitten mittens. I... I really thought you were gonna go like into a motivational speech where you were just like, "Oh, in the ball, like no matter which way the ball goes, like it'll just keep going because it's round." Be the marble, but you never, you never made it there. I thought this was gonna be no. like really inspirational, but no, it's just how you screwed over your brother. No, it, the it, butterfly. It's just the, the the screwing over my brother. That was just an aside. The point is, marbles have unlimited potential, whereas cars, are just going forward or backward. Be a marble. So now, when you hear this, I'm going to cut everything RJ set out, and it'll sound like I had this plan the whole time. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> and now that I'm going to say, RJ, you can learn something from me. Because... <laughs> and I'm going to double down. No. Anyway, guys, for real now. Whatever. If you want to get in contact with us, you know how. Probably not. You don't know the email address. Here's the thing. <laughs> send me send me an email with my email address in it. I'll give you fucking forty dollars cash. You hear this and can write my email address to an email in an email to me. It's a forty dollar money order or a cashier's check. <laughs> Be there in four to six weeks. Uh, <laughs> You're not gonna uh, get a single one. Exactly. That's the thing. I know that as long as no one I know is trying to sell me something, they'll never know how to contact me. If if any of my friends ever start working for windshield replacements or penis pills or auto insurance, they'll know exactly where I am. But until then, nobody knows I'm a ghost on the internet to my friends and family. Uh, anyway, RJ, thanks for coming on the show. It's been Thank fun. Thank you for having me. I've learned a lot. Have you? 
Yeah, I learned about Bobby Flay and learned about marbles. What else could you ask for? Remember to be the marble. Be the marble, <laughs> not Bobby uh, Flay. <laughs> duh! <laughs> Sounded like you said duh. Anyway. Guys, uh, we will catch you next time. Nope, wait. Let me back it up. We haven't said our... I gotta fucking... Here's what I'm gonna do. On this pad, when this show's over, I'm gonna write an outro that I'm gonna also then write on another thing that can't be deleted pad. later and I'm going to tape it to the wall and at the end of every show I'll read it that way at the end of every show we don't have this awkward like three minute conversation where I was like what do you think would be good RJ like how would you end a show I, I don't know and then uh, I just disconnect yeah, yeah and then I just like <laughs> the, the, no it was so old you would hear the dial tone the <laughs> anyway guys we'll see you next week Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>